Okay, okay, hi, this is Michael Ellis, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own iron flow battery, or, or basically what they're referred to as a iron salt water battery or a um, or rust, uh, iron oxide or rust battery. Um, basically these consist of iron, um, a salt water type of electrolyte, um, some t type of uh, physical membrane to keep them from shorting out and a graphite rod to act as the negative so it um, doesn't like build up on the or so it's so it actually holds a potential and it doesn't build up on the uh, the negative electrolyte or negative uh, electrode so basically what you're going to need to do this is some type of container um, waterproof and um, like a plastic container basically because you don't want um, don't want eating through any metal or um, or, uh, or or other uh, type of material. Um, so it has to be some plastic material, preferably uh, PTE or HDPE, or like a food grade type of um, plastic that can hold both acid and base and all the in betweens. Um, you're going to poke a hole, um, two holes in it, one for the iron rod one for the graphite rod. Um, I already did that um, off camera. Uh, you're going to need a um, digital multimeter to see how the voltage is and um, I think that's it. Oh, a little bit of baking soda. We're going to use baking soda instead of um, sodium chloride because it's easier uh, and it works better. I found it than um, actual salt. Um, so, so that's what you need to start out with. Oh, and you can use tap water on these. It doesn't really matter. As I've, or I've, I don't think it actually matters, but who knows? I could be wrong unless you see from someone else that it actually does matter to use distilled water. I use tap water. I haven't had problems with it. I got up to, in a little cell, um, up to 1.6 volts, which was pretty awesome. But um, I, I imagine you can do better than that. Oh, you, you will need alligator clips. And you'll also need a battery or a power supply to actually charge this. So um, to begin with, we're going to fill it with water. I'll just pause while I do that quick. Okay, so I filled it with water to about uh, maybe an inch within the top. That's pretty good. Um, then we're going to add our baking soda in. Um, so I'll add a little bit of that in. Maybe about a half a cup of baking soda. Should be more than enough. Um, mix it in. Let's use the nail to do that. So it's nice and mixed in. Okay. Um, then we'll uh, set up our lid. Or, oh, we need a membrane in there first. Uh, actually, um, how am I going to do this? Yeah, I'll probably. Uh, I guess I didn't really think that through. Um, yeah, we'll probably do that. Let's just set our membrane in there. Um, so it's actually between. I didn't actually think this through um, how to actually hold the membrane in there. Um, I think for the membrane, we'll poke a hole in the middle of this, and I'll do that quick off off camera uh, so to actually support the uh, the uh, membrane. So I'm going to cut a hole right in there to support the membrane, or maybe one here and one here, one down below there on the. Uh, I'll, I'll pause this quick and do that quick and then come back on. Oops. Okay, so as you can see, we're using a coffee filter as the membrane. And basically, what I did was I put uh, three holes along the top there, or all along the middle, certainly, rather, there. And that's basically holding it up in the center. So um, it's creating sort of a barrier between the two halves of the actual cell. So when we go and put our electrodes in there will be separated by by that uh, by that uh, membrane so okay so there's kind of like a like a half uh, uh, half-witted uh, way of doing it but anyways, um, okay so hook up our electrodes So we got our electrodes hooked up. 
now we need batteries, which I'll go get from, or a power supply, like a, actually a regulated power supply would be ideal. But since I'm doing this on my kitchen counter, um, I'm just going to use batteries, rechargeable batteries. Uh, a couple 9 volt batteries would do, and uh, I'll go get those quick, and I'll come back. Okay, so I've got um, two rechargeable 9 volt batteries. I'm hoping they're about 9 volts, actually we can check them if we want. But um, So I'm going to hook them up in series, which they have these nice little clips that make them good for doing that. So we're going to hook up the positive to the nail and the negative to the graphite. So the positive is the green and the negative is the black. And it begins, and you should have bubbles. And that is the beginning of our formation of the, uh, what should we call it, the, uh, the battery uh, 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 material. So you can either sit here and watch it or crank it up even more if it's going too slow. But as you can see, we have a nice flow. We have a nice buildup of gases. Oh, I actually never thought about that. You might want to keep it cracked open a little bit so the gases can escape. Otherwise, you might have a little combustion uh, issues or risks. And it's good, it's good to, I never thought of that. It's a good thing to have the container open a little bit so you don't get a buildup of gases in there. Let's see if I it in here. In case, uh, in case there's like a spark or something, you don't want it to explode. I notice I have the fan running here in my, in my kitchen. As you can hear in the background. I want to vent that so we don't get the buildup of combustible gases. So we're just going to let that run for, I don't know, as long as it'll run until the batteries wear down. And then some, as you can see already, it's starting to change color. It's starting to take on a kind of, kind of reddish color there. So um, so that's our battery basically charging up. So the, the theory behind the saltwater battery is that it's, the rust comes off the anode, which is the positive, and uh, potentiates the the liquid, the flow liquid, and um, and as you discharge the potential, the potential builds up in the liquid. As you discharge the potential, uh, it recovers back onto the anode. So um, that's the theory behind it anyways. So, um, so it just uh, denitrates. The oxygen basically becomes a, a negative charge, and the, the rust becomes simplified down into iron so um so it like recovers that way by going back onto the anode and restructure re um rebuilding the anode so that's a pretty cool well uh discovery there that people made but and i first heard of it this year um or no maybe one year this year one year ago but um somewhere in there so um so yeah so we basically get rust and then the rust rebuilds the anode as you as you dissipate the battery. So it's, so it's a type of flow battery, uh, but but they call it the rust battery. Is the name they gave it. So it's kind of cool, like that. So we're charging it right now. As you can see, there's crap coming off of the anode. That's the good stuff that uh. That's the stored electricity, the stored potential. So, um, so, uh, so I'll pause it and I'll come back a couple minutes later and we'll see if we have any charge in our cell. Okay, I'm back and um, so our batteries got really warm. I'll just keep a note on that. Um, and I always get good ventilation um, when you're doing this. Um, so as you can see, um, our water looks pretty dirty now. Um, yeah, that uh, iron definitely uh, dissipated into the water. So uh, let's see if we have any charge on that. So again, I'll be using the green for the positive on my meter and the black for the negative. Um, so we'll 
pick that up once again. Yeah, sorry, it's a trying to get this with one hand. Okay, there we go. Turn on our meter to DC voltage. Uh, and, and fill our voltage. We've got a couple of millivolts. That looks to be about it. Maybe I've got the. Oh, no. maybe I've got them hooked up wrong. Yeah. No, they're becoming off. It's definitely negative. Okay, so your so your iron is going to be positive, and your graphite is going to be negative. So basically, when you discharge this, um, it's going to be in the opposite polarity. Oh, there we go. We got one volt or one hundred millivolts, rather. Okay, we have a hundred millivolts. So um, not too bad for the like three minutes maybe I was charging it. Um, you can expect better results with uh, more current if you get it from a wall charger or something like that. So um, so we have 100 millivolts, 117, that's good. Um, means we actually did some work. So um, so uh, when, you, when you go to use this battery you're going to use the graphite as the positive and the iron as the the uh, ne negative, so um, so just keep that in mind. So the black negative on your meter goes to the green, and the red positive on your meter goes to the black, the um, the carbon. So um, or the graphite rather, well car carbon, but uh, graphite uh, as a material. So uh, so that's your your uh, iron cell and as, as you can see it's slowly building up more potential as you as you uh, have it uh, hooked up in uh, discharge um, uh, what you call it uh, mode discharge mode it uh, slowly builds up current as it gets gets the battery starting to heal uh, itself so um so yeah so there you have it a, a iron hydroxide or iron oxide uh, battery. So um, pretty cool. So thanks to all the scientists that put their hard work behind that. And uh, um, now we have this cool technology to play around with. So, um, so yeah, so give them a pat on the back. And now we have this... Um, great way to store energy flow batteries what have you and pretty cool experiment to do so so thanks for watching this is michael ellison have a good day